Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Vanguard Tactics. I'm Stephen Box, and if you're interested in a Warhammer 40k, then you're in the right place. Um, now, I've had a great suggestion in, and somebody said to me, why is this not called the Boxcast? So maybe we should rename this to the Boxcast after, obviously, a play on words, the Voxcast. Obviously, that GW do, but my surname being Box... Maybe it should be the box cast. Who knows? So if you think this should be called Lockdown Live Box Cast, let me know. Let me know. So, um, yeah, guys, tw day 22. Can't believe it. Um, as I said, this was only meant to happen for 21 days. And now we're on day 22 already. So hope, and I'm, I'm going to continue. I'm going to continue to see how far we go with this. Um, so yeah, grey knights are coming along nicely as well. I'll show you a little update as to I'm on the basing now. So I've got the basing on point, although I've lost my custody model is around here somewhere, but I will be talking about the old salamanders today. Um, had a great day today at foreground, uh, publishing where we are going over the storyboard for our infomercial, um, for helping getting these, um, what I think they're called protective equipment um, for the front line against coronavirus for the people at the NHS. Uh, so yeah, some really good stuff. So that's all going to be in the pipeline. And um, today was finding out the story behind what we want to really get across to people, um, how people can get involved um, and also how they can support the cause. And if anything, it's just a case of looking to do uh, companies coming together, collaborating to, you know, making this work. By the way, guys, I've zoomed in slightly. So what do you think of the new shot? You're getting a closer input on the facial expressions. Um, so there's less background, more me. Let me know what you think. Is that a better this way around or the traditional? What I normally go for this way. Which way is best? front or back let me know guys because what i'm not going for is just hair that is not a good option for me so yeah it's been a good day today also i've been learning about color grading these videos as i'm really getting into the editing side of stuff so i really want to make sure vanguard tactics next series of video is on point okay as you already notice i've got a bit of teal going on in the background i want a bit of blue so we've got a bit of blue and teal which will then match the new i'm thinking about rebranding vanguard tactics uh so we're looking at some slightly different colors uh i don't know if i really love the green if i'm honest the green i find really hard to work with uh, when I'm making graphic design. Um, also, the new studio is a sort of closer to a teal color or a turquoise color than it is a green. Um, so I'm tempted to go down that road. Also, it's been decided that the new studio is going to be called Vanguard Studios. There have a Vanguard Studios, a bit like MGM Studios. Um, yeah. It's going to be vanguard studios uh richard so we did see that yeah comment from you that was where this has come from the box cast um so yeah i'm thinking vanguard studios and also um we're actually building a second studio already yeah so there's going to be uh another studio built and also there is going to be um an office built at vanguard studios so yeah, it's incredible to see um, what we're doing so far with the progressions that we're making and ultimately to provide, uh, you know, some of the top notch entertainment and education for competitive and just all, all aspects of 40K, really. And then in the future, Vanguard Studios will be able to do some other aspects like um, uh, AOS, maybe. Who knows? Lord of the Rings. More time. Who knows? Some options there. So, yeah, we can dive in a little bit deeper into some of that stuff as well. Uh, so I'll quickly dive in the chat before we get into the, the main segment of this. Last time I dived into the chat and I didn't come out. I was stuck in the chat and I never even got to talk about the salamanders or the movement phase. So I'm going to put a limit on this. Um, 18.13. Three minutes in the chat, I'm doing salamanders. All right, here we go. 
uh, Jordan said, hey, what's the next tournament you'll be doing uh, that you'll be going to? I have no clue. I would love to be able to tell you exactly what tournament I was doing next, but I literally can't tell you. Yeah. Um, I literally can't tell you because of the coronavirus, basically. Yeah. I did have loads planned. I was meant to go to literally three in the last three weekends, but obviously have all been cancelled as I've been stuck in today. So, yeah. Um, right. Okay. Simone, hi, all good. How do you keep your scouts alive to hold objectives with the Blood Angels while the rest of your army is in the middle of the table? Mine dies too easily. Well, either keep them out of line of sight, keep them within the five up, feel no pain, or just let them die. It's, you know, it's going to happen. But if they're shooting your scouts, they're not shooting your sanguinary guard or your death company. So it's a win, I think. Um, Henrik said, um, oh, sorry, Sir Stephen. What, Sir Stephen? I love that, Sir Stephen. You've been knighted, Sir Stephen. Will you protect the lands of the Emperor, Sir Stephen? Yep, obviously. Of course I will. Yep, in my golden shiny armour. Sir Stephen, what would be your go-to protecting Iron Warriors demon engine gun line? Probably Alpha Legion Chaos Troops, because then you could just say, look, no, no, no coming in from reserve within 12 inches, my friend. You can stay back there, okay? Watch it. You ain't coming in. Yeah, probably them. Alpha Legion. Uh, Chaos Boys. Not cultists, though, because they don't get the keyword. It has to be Chaos Space Marines. Just headbutted my mic. Not, Don't do that. Um, Henrik said, watched your D6 Evolution Blood Angels video. Wondering if in curses and Psychic Awake, uh, Psychic might actually add something to your Blood Angel. Unleash Rage is nice. If remember, Hagstorm uses dual... Jump pack libbies. Um, yeah, so I've used incursors in the past and I thought they were good, but and I really like incursors. I'm a big advocate for that unit. However, um, I need the points. I need the points of the Vanguard Vets. I've considered some jump pack librarians, but I just think the other characters add more, in my opinion, and I don't need to roll powers. I mean, you guys saw my ability to roll dice on the um, Wrap and Trap video when I came to roll three armor saves of a two up for the Sanguinary Guard. I rolled three ones. So, trying to cast a power? No. I struggle with litanies, let alone trying to make a power on a seven on two dice. Or, you know, it's just not happening. Um, but it's, it's an option, but yeah, to be honest, I'm not going to change my Blood Angel list. Um, I've had so much success with it. Why change it, you know? I have seen a few Death Watch reviews, I'm not going to lie. But until I get it in my hands, I don't want to talk about it just yet, you see. Um, but yeah, I must admit, from what I've seen, I'm not incredibly overwhelmed by it. That's probably a good word to use. Yeah. I was really hoping for just that little bit more. Not that much more, just a little bit more. And it wasn't quite there. So I'd like to see a bit more, please, GW. Something a bit more unique and special to the Death Watch. That's what I want. So maybe in the next step FAQ, add it in. Okay. That's what we want. The boys in black. Yep. They're the ones that have taken the oath. Protecting the wall and all that with Jon Snow, you know. I want a little bit special and like a super doctrine, stuff like that. That's what we want, okay? Okay, so is Dante worth taking? Yes. Because he's cool. Yeah. Um, Ventress, thank you so much for your email, by the way. I read it today. Um, I haven't had chance because I've obviously got back from doing the storyboard stuff. Um, I've had a few emails today and your email, I'll be honest, really made my day. It was incredibly humbling to read. And thank you so much for sharing your story with me and that email. Honestly, it really means a lot. Um, it's emails like that, that make you know, this whole thing worth it. Uh, why I do what I do. Um, so honestly, it was truly gr grateful to, for your email. So thank you so much. Um, yeah, because without your information, your, without your input, guys, um, 
I'm just kind of sat here talking to my computer and my camera and I've no clue what you even think of it. So it's emails like that that really help keep this, you know, me motivated as well. It's like, imagine going to work every day and your boss never, ever telling you that you did a good job. You'd be like, why am I doing this? So, um, yeah, without your feedback, guys, it, well, with your feedback, it just makes this a lot more intrinsically worth it to me. OK, it really does. Um, so also I've had a few emails about people wanting the VIP package. As I said, guys, there's only five. So I think three came in yesterday. I'm going to email you all you three back as soon as I get off this with the right links that you're going to need to sign up for that VIP package. Um, so you can get full access to the mentorship right from day dots. You don't need to wait. It won't be drip fed like it is normally. And the reason why I normally drip feed the content, by the way, is for two reasons. Number one, so you can't just blitz all the content in, you know, the space of an hour. What you wouldn't, you'd, you'd, you'd be, I mean, it's impossible anyway, um, unless you had me on a hundred times speed. But anyway, um, you can't just blitz it in a week because you're not going to learn that way. Most people learn in segments and chunks. Okay. You can only digest so much information before it's just going to go over your head and you're not really going to take it in. A lot of the guys on the course at the moment are re-watching stuff. Um, you know, watching the modules back, taking different notes, playing some test games, watching those videos again uh, to really let it sink in. So that's one of the main reasons. In number two, so it's actually a sustainable business for Vanguard Tactics to, to grow and develop, which obviously is in the interest, hopefully, of everyone. Um, yeah, so that's kind of why. But with the full access package, because it's a paid up year course um, and we're in this coronavirus, I appreciate people have got more time on their hands to, you know, die digest all that information plus you're paying for the course up front so i don't is less risk on my part as a business owner so yeah it's a kind of yeah that's how it is basically so i'll get back to everyone today but thank you for all those that do want to come on the vip and you also get that one-to-one -one call with me so we can delve in and get your list on point straight away so um wow so many so many questions right so i want to talk about i've been talking about this yeah we're going to look at some salamanders, guys, okay? I'm going to bring up the salamanders right now, and we're going to have a little cheeky look at them. Like I said, I've been working on the module for uh, the mentorship for Space Marines, and it is massive, this module. I, it was going to be part of um, a, another module, Armies of the Imperium, but it's so big that I've needed to have its own dedicated module. And I think it could be the la it could this module could be so big, it's actually bigger than all the other the rest of the course put together, because there is so much on Marines. Okay, salamanders. Let's have a quick look at what they get. So their original benefit is that they get a, a reroll to hit and a reroll to wound for every unit, okay, which is uh, whether it's in the shooting phase, the combat phase, or overwatch. Absolutely brilliant. They also get um, the ability to ignore minus one modifiers when it comes to AP, which I think is often forgotten with the salamanders. That's their like second ability. So that's often quite good because you think of like a, aggressors now with their minus one and any, any sort of bolt gun in the uh, tactical doctrine, you're just going to ignore that. So if you've got good tough units, uh, anything with a two or three up save in cover, you're still going to get a really solid save to just so they've got that durability there. All right. Now what they're super doctrine. If you stay pure salamanders, um, whilst the tactical doctrine is active and remember now you get that for turns two and three, which you're going to stay into when resolve an attack with a flame or a melter weapon by this ability, add one to the wound roll. That is fantastic. That is super good. So anytime you're manipulating the wound roll really gives you um, you know, just that upper hand because wounding is hard in the game. Right. Okay. So let's have a little look. Warlord traits. Let's delve in deep. Now, remember guys, when I'm looking for warlord traits, I've told you guys time and time again, I'm looking for warlord traits that are, um, synergistic to the entire army, not just this character individually. Okay. So I've certainly come away from trying to buff up key characters to looking at how do I, how do I improve my army? That's what you really want to play with. Okay. Is your army. So, 
Anvil of Strength, add two to the strength characteristics. I mean, that's good, but again, it doesn't really help the army. When this ward will lose to the wound, six plus is not lost. In addition, at the start of your movement phase, regains a wound. Again, it's not really going to come up that often. It's pretty cool. And I think some of these really sweet warlord traits, what GW have done well, is you can tell when, I, when I'm reading the warlord traits, you, I've got like two two minds okay i've got the narrative side of me which thinks right this guy here he's going to be super buffed up like you ain't going to touch him his name's billy the big boy and you ain't going to beat billy big boy he's just you know the bee's knees he's my favorite cool chapter master that i've converted um you know and essentially the the narrative side in terms of the warlord traits they're there and things like that plus two strength you could have like a super strong character that's great from a competitive side we're looking for the in those warlord traits are in here as well so depending on the type of game you're going for that's what you need to really look at okay um chapter master valric how many intercessors can i fit in a 1500 point list many so let's have a look at this because I actually writ a list which was pure intercessor spam for um, two armies, Blood Angels, which I think could work quite well, or also um, the Iron Hands. Now, this does abuse two of the rules ever so slightly, but it is disgusting. So I writ this for a, writ this, wrote, wrote this for a 2,000 point list, but you could obviously shave off 500 points. You're also taking advantage of Grey Shield, which is a warlord trait, which is in the Vigilist Defiant um, thing, which is just crazy good, where you can basically adopt another chapter for that turn. Uh, so you can have all advanced and charging. Now, this works off having Theros in there. So you get everyone's got a five up invulnerable save, and everyone's also going to get a five up feel no pain from the chief apothecary. All right. Now, in this list, I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, oh, this isn't the list. I think you can roughly get a hundred intercessors in 2000 points with all the benefits that you need. Um, so yeah, you can do some crazy stuff. So we could easily shrink this down. Valric, let's have a chat after this and we'll get you a list. Yeah, we'll get you a list drawn up. Um, but this could be crazy good. Here we go. Look, so you've got 10 troops. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's 80 intercessors in the in this list. Um, every single sergeant has got a power fist over 10 units. Company Ancient, Primaris Apothecary, one Mortis Dreadnought. That's your captain. Uh, that's a character, sorry. Then you've got a chaplain, Ferros, chapter master, captain, and Primaris Lieutenant. That is a brutal list. Absolutely brutal. So glad you brought that one up was going to go do it with fists and bolter stuff yep we can definitely do with a fist attachment so what instead you instead of getting the five uh the five plus fill no pain you get the six plus fill no pain which is definitely still um you know good to go with or you just um if you want to go super competitive i suppose you go with the iron hands and then you gray shield to get your imperial fist for the turn um that's that's the other option i think that's your more competitive side like if you want a, a list that you, you're there cuts the mustard or potentially maybe less effective in terms of its durability but better on the damage output you go for the imperial fists and maybe that's what you do instead so it's it's options but anyway we'll get we'll get back to our salamanders um but you know we, we can definitely chat about that as well and come up with something good for a bit more narrative or competitive. And, and I think that's where you want to design lists to. You kind of want lists to play with your mates, which isn't super hardcore, somewhere which is a bit more like completely narrative and you're just throwing anything on the table or obviously which, you know, I mainly focus a lot on. So sometimes I can look at things with slightly blinkers on um, and, and please don't ever feel like I don't appreciate the other two ways to play. I do. But obviously when I'm creating this channel, people come to the channel for kind of that blinkered view. Otherwise you, you should be talking about it all day, wouldn't you really, if you're trying to um, appease everyone, so to speak. So anyway, let's get on to these warlord traits. Um, so we've got, we've, all, we've, we've looked at the strength. We've looked at the extra regaining of wounds. At the start of the battle round, you can select one friendly Salamander unit within six until the end of the battle. 
that unit has the defenders of humanity. So basically, you could make aggressors have the um, objective secured. Um, yeah, which which is okay. But again, nothing really crazy to write home about. Add two to the sh the toughness characteristic. Again, um, it's not really helping the army much. You can reroll the dice to determine the attacks made with flame weapons by friendly salamander models within six of the world. That's a little bit better. Obviously, we can now really utilize that six inch aura that we want um, once per shooting phase and or once per fight when resolving an attack made with this warlord, you auto it automatically hits. Uh, so a bit of a, sh I think Lord of Fire is probably your best one, but now then with that, Lord of Fire is starting to dictate the way we go with the army, which isn't too bad with the flamers, but I think we're definitely taking Lord of Fire. I think that will work quite well in with some of the units that I've got in mind to take with these boys. So I'll have a quick dive into the relics, okay? Um, add one to the attacks characteristics. We're modeled... Uh, you know what? Mm -mm -mm. So this is quite good. Add one attacks... Add one to the attack characteristics of a model with this relic. In addition, once per battle at the start of the fight phase, a model with this relic can hold aloft Vulcan Sigil. Until the end of that phase, add one to the attack characteristics as a friendly model, Salamander units, whilst they're within six, which means that what's going to happen here is that for that one turn, if you charge, you're going to get that plus one attack, plus this once per game relic, all of a sudden you can get two attacks extra in that first round of combat. Or this is where sometimes space Marines can come a cropper is that when you're trying to get your wrap and trap off, you, you get the wrap and obviously that's when you get the plus one attack, but it's actually not until you really need it once you've established the wrap and that's in the second turn. So if there's no new charges because it's an ongoing combat, you're not getting that plus one attack, but that is the turn in which you need to completely obliterate the unit you're in combat with, so then you can consolidate your, hopefully, six inches if your litany went off towards the closest enemy model, and then move um, and then charge again. So that's kind of key. So this is actually, I think, and it just says, once per battle at the start of the fight phase, so actually what you can do is pop this in your opponent's fight phase to get that extra attack so you can deliver the blow when you need to. It's tactically less i think it's tactically better however it's not the obvious choice i think the obvious choice is to play it when you go in and just probably overkill most of the units but marines because you've got that um yeah ability it's just fantastic that that for me off the bat that relic's probably going in you've then got a super duper thunder hammer that's pretty cool but again you've got another cool rapid fire weapon here um Subtract one from the wound roll on a mantle. That's quite good. Here we go. Let's have a little look at this librarian only. Um, I do like librarian um, uh, relics normally. So let's have a little look. Librarian model only. A model with this relic knows one psychic power from the Prometheum discipline in addition to any other power it knows. Now, this is quite nice. When a psychic test is taken with a model attempting to manifest a power from the Prometheum, you can add one to the total. So sometimes the, uh, the salamanders or any space marine, I wish the ultramarines had this, is um, that ability to use some of their faction um, specific powers and also null zone. Null zone is an incredible power, probably, you know, against certain army builds. Null zone is just worth its weight in gold. So this means because you know that power, you can probably take null zone and one other. So maybe might of heroes. And then what you can also, or psychic fortress, which are very good defensive powers, and then take one from the salamanders also. And you're going to get that plus one to cast, which is really nice, I think. Um, when resolve, uh, okay, we've already mentioned that one. Primaris model only, add one to the wound characteristic, subtract, no, probably not that one. Then here we go, let's have a little look at the cheeky special issue war, ga uh, war gear. Um, you got the mastercrafted artificer armor, digital weapons. Here we go, look, six up, feel no pain. Absolutely brilliant. Yeah, within six of the model. That's great. Just to give you that extra reliability. I like that a lot. 
and then you've got some sort of dark dra- drake blade that does that sticks out some mortal wounds okay so stratagems um also they've got that character let's have a quick look at him to see whether he can cut the mustard we've obviously got vulcan heston who um who's actually got a data sheet in here which is interesting um and then we've got adrax um so what does he do he goes add one to wound rolls for melee weapons that's not bad so he, basically they're a blood angel for the turn when they're near within six of him that's quite good he's got a pretty tasty hammer um we'll have a little look at his points in a minute and he gives reroll ones to hit so he's pretty good i think yeah or you've got vulcan reroll ones or you can reroll the hit and reroll the wound for f- flame and melt weapons again that's absolutely excellent and both adrax is 140 vulcan's 130 they're both not bad in terms of their points i think if you're going to go pure sallies you're probably going to you know put these in um and i'd be tempted to go that way i know a lot of people are going a successor and they're going for long range marksmen to get that extra three inches on the flame weapons but those characters with the plus one to wound in combat that's going to come up a lot and also being able to re-roll the wound with the plus one to wound on those flamer weapons is excellent so yeah i think they've got some good play here let's have a little quick look at their strats um in fact before we look at strats we'll look at psychic powers flaming blast some mortal wounds again i'm not looking for anything damage output i'm looking here for things that are going to really add value to the rest of the army um okay so basically you can make a unit minus one to hit that's okay um another mortal wound here we go. It's, if manifested, select one friendly sound man using within 12 and to add one toughness. So you could make a unit minus one to hit and plus one toughness. We could stack those. When you can find those nice stacks, that's quite good. All of a sudden, you could have toughness six aggressors. I mean, they ain't moving anywhere, are they? If they're minus one to hit as well. Um, yeah, I quite like those. So you're looking at Drake, Skin, and Fire Shield. They're your two powers you're probably going to take. Um, then strats. We'll quickly whiz through these. Use a stratagem in any phase when a salamander character from destroyed. So basically, you can return to play a character for two CPs. That's quite expensive, but oh, I'm, I've missed a page. Max number of shots for salamanders for two CPs. So that's excellent. Um, yeah, absolutely incredible for flamer aggressors. Um, or Assault Centurions is probably where you're going to use that to its most effective amount. Um, use this stratagem in the fight phase when a Salamander unit from your army. But remember, we're already re-rolling the dice anyway, so you may not even need that to, you know, the auto unless it definitely needs to come up because you're already re-rolling your Warlord trait. Use this stratagem in the fight phase when a Salamander unit from your fight with until the end of the phase. Wow, yeah. Plus one to the wound roll in the shooting or the fight phase. So now this is going to stack with the uh, big dog, Adrax's ability. So you're going to get plus two to wound on a unit. That's excellent. Yep. Loving that for one CP. Okay. Use this stratagem in the fight phase. Select one Salamander unit from your army until the end of that phase. Add one to the strength models in that unit. Wow. When resolving the attack made with a weapon by in that unit, a modified is six doubles the damage characteristics of weapon. Wow. Use this stratagem at the start. Add one strength. So now, here's what you can do. The stacks potential with this. Now, often in the game, you'll find that there's, there's, a, there's a really particular number. And when the number's matched, um, so let's say you've got a strength, five, a strength four uh, base model. So let's take aggressors. I think they're strength four off the top of my head uh they double that to strength eight so that if they're attacking a knight they're normally wounding on fours right now with this for one cp you're going to get that boom strength five which then doubles to strength 10 so now you're wounding on threes so if they're near adrax you're going to get you're going to be wounding on twos if they're not 
near Adrax, then you can spend one CP and they're still wounding on two. So all of a sudden, your you know reliability to just blitz through that night is just crazy good. Yeah. Wow, I just there's some good stuff in here, guys. Really good stuff. You've obviously got the mortal wound thing on the. I think that is now on. I need to look at the FAQ, but I know that definitely changed. It's not quite as brutal as it was, but it's still good anyway. Rights of Vulcan. Use this stratagem at the start of your uh, movement phase if the tactical doctrine is active until the next rapid fire when resolving a rapid fire on assault weapon made from your army and a modified six. For arm wound roll of six. Um, wound roll of six. The armor penetration. So you're basically improving the armor penetration by one on a... Yeah, that's. I think all all of them have got that. Okay, let's have a look. Despite the odds, use your stratagem at the end of fours. Okay, so basically another tactical objective. Okay, use this stratagem in the shooting phase when the Salamis unit from your army to shoot until the end of the phase. Change all flame weapons becomes pistol. Wow. Again, incredible, guys, because, again, this is where you might look at that and think, well, that's not that great having pistol flame weapons. But it is when you're wrapping and trapping. So when you really understand the mechanics of the game and ultimately how you can use all these things in conjunction to one another, you have to kill that unit you've wrapped. Because if you don't, you're now stuck in combat and you're going to kill them in your turn again, which is just soul breaking because you're never actually going to achieve what you want to, which is to be able to consolidate into that next unit um, in their turn. Because you always want to kill your opponent in their turn, not your turn, all right, when you're in combat. That's the general gist of it. But knowing that you're going to have this um, ability to, you know, basically have the, if it doesn't work, if you don't completely annihilate your opponent in their turn, you can then in your next turn flame them. And because you didn't fall back, you can actually declare a charge from that point because you didn't fall back and you stayed in combat and you killed your enemy with pistol weapons. You can then declare a charge. How good's that? So a good Salamanders player will start to tee up some of these options so that, yeah, they just need to make a two, three inch charge into the next unit if they completely flame uh, pistol their opponent away all right so th again like you got to think about this stuff the top players in the game are thinking two three turns ahead this is the options that i have you know available to me so you can a lot of people say oh but it's a dice game yeah i joke about dice but let's be honest i because i've become notoriously bad at rolling dice i'd never let the dice affect the outcome of the game so as a salamanders player i'd be like right I'm going to tee up this charge. So just in case, worst case scenario, I don't kill the opponent in their turn and I can't consolidate into my opponent so I can ignore the overwatch. What I'm going to do is set it up so that I got the uh, the next inbuilt ability to flame them in my turn so that I can charge again off the back of this guy. So you've got some options. So yeah, that's how you got to think You know, constantly ahead of the game. And this is where your opponent looks at you and they're like, it's like they're, they're looking at you like you're playing a different game of 40k than you than they are because you're not, you know, even needing to roll dice. You're like, yeah, I've just made my charge because I needed a double and one. You know, you don't even need to roll potentially. Yeah. And that is when it happens, you're like. It really, you know, is an eye is a real eye opener for me when I played people, I was like. I want to get that good. And I literally studied and studied and studied, practice, practice, practiced, noted everything down, taught everything I knew. And now hopefully I'm getting to that sort of level myself. Um, let's have a little look at this. Two CPs. Use this stratagem at the start of your opponent's shooting phase. Select one Salamander's infantry unit from your army until the end of the phase. Enemy, tar enemy units cannot target other friendly units from your army that are within six of this selected unit. That is brilliant. So you can make that unit minus one to hit and plus one toughness. You stick the two CPs on it and your whole army's got concealed so it can't be touched apart from that front unit. Wow. That is brilliant. And again, you can be probably quite cautious with where you're placing those models to get the most out of cover, line of sight and all that stuff. 
Okay. I've already spoke to the one about the, the old captain jumping out. Use this strategy when the fight phase where the salamander unit from your army is chosen to fight until the end of that phase when resolve an attack with a melee. Okay, so basically you're just going to um, re-roll hits against some chaos chappies. Stand your ground. Use this strategy in, the f in any phase when a salamander's infantry unit from your army is not a servitor, did not advance previous movement phase, blah, 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 until the end of the phase when resolve an attack with a weapon that has a damage characteristic of one in the model, add one to the save and throw. Okay. That's good. So basically... Um, yeah, plus one to your cover if it's only damage one. Again, that's nice. Um, and again, you can start to stack these things together to make your army literally just not go anywhere. You, you've got that six plus fill no pain relic as well to add on. Um, you can overwatch with a friendly unit for two CPs. And you can heroically intervene 2d6. Wow, that's amazing. Relentless determination. Use a stratagem at the end of your movement phase until the start. Entreat as if you'd remain stationary. So what this means is that your aggressors can now double shoot for one CP. Brilliant. Use a stratagem after nominating a salamander unit from the named character. You can generate an additional warlord for them. Okay, cool. Um, that's quite good. Extra warlord trait. Um, use this, but some of them weren't. We're only really taking that one flame one, really. Use a stratagem before the battle. Select one salamander unit from your army in the sergeant profile. Uh, they can take a a digital weapon or something, master crafter weapon. Uh, trust a Prometheus. Use a stratagem after nominating from a salamander success for. Okay, you can take take a relic. So, uh, guys, I think there's some top combos in there. Some really tasty co combo salamanders. Um, I must admit, I'm tempted with them. I think Salamanders have got some play, you know. Yeah. Looks like I bet get better got staying getting some aggressors in the salt sense down on the table. Thomas has said, guys, by the way, I'll jump in and take any questions for another sort of five minutes or so, and then we'll cover the movement phase tomorrow or maybe in a separate video potentially. Thomas has said, Hey Steve, on Blood Angel question, how do you feel about using rhinos, mainly the soak up grey knight mortal wounds with litany of faith to hide scouts from Thunderfire cannons? I wouldn't bother. I really wouldn't bother. The if I'm honest, you should beat Grey Knights anyway. You don't need to have your scouts in rhinos. It's a complete waste, I think. Um yeah, you're investing in a unit that's purpose is literally the board control and get you some points while they're alive and get you some CPs. That's it. So you don't want to invest any more. And that's just a really expensive unit. You may as well take in curses for the point differential would be better. Plus, if you can keep them within six of that banner, then they're going to get a five at feel no pain. Yeah. You're going to put double the amount of wounds on the table. So don't do the rhinos, please don't. Um a suraman by the way is a beast love him absolutely love him if you are close combat and kill your opponent in your shooting turn with pistols do you have the three inch consolidation no you don't get to consolidate after that um What do you think of the new Death Watch stuff? When I get that, you know, I don't like to talk about too much unless it until it's officially released, to be honest. Um, from what I've seen so far, I'm, I'm really hoping for some really specific things to Death Watch. Whatever they get does still make them better than what they are last week. So it is an up on the whole. Do you have any tips for avoiding wraps, especially the Possessed Bomb? Um, well... Do you mind getting wrapped if you're the possessed bomb? That's kind of where you want to be, isn't it? Is in combat. Um, I do have tips for avoiding getting wrapped. And again, that's on the mentorship video, which is you get it week three um, in literally how to stop yourself getting wraps. But you can use terrain. You can use heroic intervention. You can use where you place your models, where, how you have them deployed on the table, the distances they are 
in terms of their coherency. There's loads of little tricks you can do to stop it happening. I mean, it can still happen, but you just make it that much harder for your opponent. And if your opponent wants one, well, they're not going to have long left if they spend 40 minutes trying to get one wrap off. So you're like, cool, take take all the time you want. And you're like, oh, you clocked out. Okay, well, look, I can now get to play the rest of the game. Um, so what are the questions we've got? Greening, heroic intervention, that's all going to help. Model placement is key as well. Positioning on the tabletop, left side, right side, how close you are to the board edge, how close you've got units in between each other. There's loads of little things you can do to stop it happening. Any tips on becoming a better Gene Steeler Cult player? Anything particular you should think of? Movement phase is key for you. Absolutely key. Um, when you can really nail that, then you're going to dominate with Gene Steeler Cult. When you understand where you're going to get your wraps and traps off as well, that's key for you is wrapping and trapping because in making sure you're stringing back your units to get all the buffs from the characters. Get that right. Think pre ahead. Then, yeah, utilizing your characters efficiently to keeping them back, buffing the army, and you'll do well with the uh, aberrants or uh, rocks or big units of those. Matthew said, hey, buddy, a friend and I just started playing Warhammer and getting into the ITC. Good man, etc. And appreciate your content. Thank you so much, buddy. Really appreciate that. Having some fun writing a Blood Angel list, basically yours with a tweak here and there. Could you explain your plus to wound? Can you explain your plus to wound? Um, essentially, you get plus one to wound when you charge. That's their Blood Angel ability, okay, in the fight phase. But don't tweak my list, okay? There's no tweakage needed. And I'm going to be emailing out my new list uh, probably next week, okay? So the list that I'm running at the moment, they'll be emailed out next week. So don't st – we I had this conversation yesterday, right? You don't take Van Gogh's latest portrait and start just, you know, throwing random bits of paint at it. You just go – Perfect. That's what we're going to do. So no tweaking, all right? Um, would multi-melted devs in Vulcan and company vets with storm shields to cover Vulcan worth the points? No. I don't think so. Multi-melters, four shots. And even, the, even if you got four hits, maybe four wounds... Averagely on the damage, that's seven, that's 14 damage. If you all hit, all wound, and they didn't make a save, 14 damage. That doesn't even kill a repulsor. Yeah. Um, thank you. That really helps. Just one more thing. Any tips for clearing screen or chaff? Um, <clears throat> again, with your army, maybe some utilize some guard aspects, maybe some punisher tank commanders. They're pretty good at clearing chaff and screens really, really well. Having some acolytes on the board to move forward, getting amongst it early doors. Yeah, but, but you know, with the with the Gene Stealer Colt, you can play turn three onwards. You know, you can spend turn two just clearing. You can use a Flamer Bomb as well. Bring that in first, clear screens, bring the next unit in, move it forward, then charge because that screen no longer there. So that's what you can do. Make sure the Flamer Bomb goes off first, obviously. Um <clears throat> Do you think Space Wolf, Vendreds, Wolf and Dreads can be competitive? Um, I think the I think Murderfang is very competitive, and I think the character ones are, but not necessarily Vendreds. Um, hey, Steven, starting a new custode army, and I'm not sure how to maximize their strengths. What units are the strongest? Completely depends on play style, whether you go Forge World or not, but I would actually look at a very heavy infantry troop base list. And then bikes as well. I think bikes are underrated, and I think they've still got some fantastic play. But again, big old units. Tell that lady who fixed that old yeah, religious painting, yeah. Um, I'm also guessing you've dropped the sanguinary axes. I've never been a fan considering the same price as the fist. Um, yeah, the only reason I went for axes is because at the time that's all I had modeled. So everything is swords with two fists per squad. I think swords are the moneymaker for me. Um, somebody's commenting some extremely rude comments on this video, so please don't. I don't appreciate it. So I'm going to hide your 
comments. They're held for review and they're hidden. So no more rude comments, please. I don't want any of that vulgar chat on this uh, 40k tactics channel. Thank you very much. Or do you know what? As it any more, and I'm going to block you. Okay, don't want you on the channel. No need for that. Um, so was more the plus. Let us tweak good service model we're made for. You can if you want. If you want to lose games, that's up to you, okay? If you don't want the good list, well, I'm only joking. You do what you want. It's completely cool. Would you tweak you... You would tweak you Van Gogh painting now Primaris Ragnar's out? No. I don't... Uh, Primaris Ragnar will not be making my Space Wolf list. There we go. And if you want to see my list, it's below in the comments. <coughs> Excuse me. So, guys, I'm going to leave that there. That's 46 minutes, and these are meant to be 20 minutes long. I, I always do this every single day. I always go over. So, anyway, guys, we're going to be back tomorrow at 6 o'clock as per usual. You guys, please all stay safe. Um, yeah, and tonight's tip, guys, is... Make sure you get some good sleep. So at the moment, if you're locked in the house, these are my top tips for improving your sleep quality. I've been certainly struggling with my sleep because, um, you know, we're not outside as much. You're not moving around. You're not really seeing much daylight. So here are my top tips. Go for a walk around sunset. OK, if you go for a walk around sunset, you actually see the sun come down. That will help you know, your circadian rhythm, kick in a place where it actually help you sleep. Also, later towards the evening, put your phone, laptop, whatever on night mode. So actually there's less blue light. Blue light stimulates essentially and throws your circadian rhythm off, off its, you know, natural tilt or whatever, which is probably why you're all finding it's harder to go to bed at night and you're waking up later in the day because you're just, your body clock's you know, out of sync. So go for that walk at sunset, even if it's 15 minutes, see the sun come down, then the best thing to do is turn off most of the big light, use things like candles, anything with like a red glow is better. So that orange glow light over there is better than a bright white light. <laughs> Try and come away from screens, read a book, write down what you're grateful for, write down tomorrow's tasks and you'll sleep much, much better. Okay. So yeah. And then you'll feel, you'll wake up a lot more positive and motivated to seize the day and also then, you know, get into a morning routine, but we can talk about that on another episode. So guys take care and um, also see you all soon. Well, see you tomorrow. See you later.